they're out. The brackets are out. And we now have our 68 team field with four teams, you know, that are out technically at the ready to replace anybody at the go. And there's also second place teams, you know, teams that probably went second place in their conference tournament, you know, that lost their conference tournament. They're also on standby um, to replace, you know, one bid league. So there you go with that. We have an interesting bracket here for Selection Sunday, for March Madness, for this 2021 NCAA Basketball Tournament. And let's start with the West region, baby. And honestly, this region is basically a cakewalk for Gonzaga. It is a cakewalk. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. I thought I thought this region would be a little bit better. I, I really did. Because this is basically the Gonzaga opponent invitational. I did not expect, you know, some of these teams to be where they are. You know, as far as some of the larger Power 5 teams, you know, getting where they are. But let's break it down first. Um, you know, some things you're, you're going to hear from me that are just going to be, you know, like, what are you talking about? You know, and some things are going to be like, oh, well, yeah. But Gonzaga will take on the winner of the first four game between Norfolk State and Appalachian State. I don't think, you know, teams from smaller conferences should be playing first four games. In fact, you know, the last eight at-large teams should be playing first four games. But whatever. I, I think, you know, I think it should be all, you know, at-large teams playing the first four games. Not teams that earned it in a smaller conference, you know, Norfolk State had to earn it after the true MEAC champion, the actual MEAC champion that was forced to, you know, suspend their season in North Carolina A&T, you know, got infected with COVID, they got out, they got, they hides held it out of there. We'll be taking on Appalachian State who won the Sun Belt, gonna be an interesting matchup there, I think Gonzaga will easily, you know, take care of 16th seed. Oklahoma, Missouri. I knew Missouri, you know, was not where they were a month ago, and they fell all the way down to number nine. I think Oklahoma will, you know, take care of us there. I don't. Think, I'm, I'm not a big believer in Missouri. I was never a big believer in Missouri at all. Creighton taking on UC Santa Barbara. Um, Creighton, Creighton's been kind of a, they've been kind of weird. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's been a weird season for them. You know, because, I mean, they they were doing so damn good at the beginning of the season. And I don't know what in the world happened to them late in the season. Like, they were looking kind of rough. Uh, Virginia taking on Ohio, the MAC champions. Oh, boy. That is going to be fun. I knew Virginia was going to be a four seed, you know, somewhere along the line. But here's a real, here's a real interesting one. Wichita State, Drake, former Missouri Valley Conference mates. Taking on USC, you know, one of them will take on USC, by the way. Um, Wichita State was one of those bubble teams, you know, that we were all interested in, you know, for a long time, you know. And we wondered where they were going to go because some people were saying Wichita State was going to be out. And I didn't believe that. And I'm glad them and Drake got in. Kansas somehow, of course they're number three seed. Of course, you know, Kansas is the number three seed. But whatever. They're taking on Eastern Washington. I hope Eastern Washington gets a W there because I hate Kansas. Or you're taking on VCU, baby. And the Atlantic 10 is getting two bids. They're, they're getting two teams in. I know. Crazy, right? Same thing um, with another couple of conferences, too. Some conferences got two bids. I'm so surprised at that, you know. You know, some of these mid-major conferences that are not Power 5 conferences, yet they're not smaller conferences. They got two bids, and I'm so surprised, you know. And Iowa being a 2 seed, taking on Grand Canyon, pretty surprised at that. I I did not think that Iowa deserved a 2 seed. I think their defense is still kind of rough to watch around the edges. And again, Gonzaga might cakewalk this entire region because they've beaten most of these teams in this region already. Virginia, Kansas, and Iowa already. They've beaten them already. And Oklahoma, I think Oklahoma could give Gonzaga, you know, the biggest challenge. But I think Gonzaga will make it out of this region, honestly. Not going to lie to you. 
Um, next up, we have the South region, and this is the region that is the most stacked. I'm not even going to lie to you. Boy, is this region stacked. You got Baylor at number one. You got Wisconsin, one of the toughest schedules in the country, taking on North Carolina. Boy, that is going to be fun. Winthrop, who's only lost one game this entire season, taking on Villanova. Villanova, they don't have Colin Gillespie. They don't have him for the time being. They don't have him. That is going to be one hell of a matchup, let me tell you that. Purdue taking on my alma mater, baby, the UNT Mean Green. Purdue, number four, North Texas, 13th seed. There you have it. I told you, again, there's some conferences that got two teams in. Utah State is in from the Mountain West. The Mount, I, I mean, the Mountain West was like, you know, I thought... For a while there, that the Mountain West is only going to get one team in, but they got two, and we'll talk about the second one in a minute. But Texas Tech is no slouch. Texas Tech is no slouch, and Utah State is definitely no slouch. You know, gonna be one hell of a game. Colgate, the team who, who won the Patriot League, boy oh boy, they had a magical season. They'll be taking on Arkansas, who is number three, a number three seed. Arkansas is deadly underrated. Um, I, the only time I really had the opportunity to watch them, I ended up missing that game with them in Alabama. Um, that was a couple weeks ago. But man, Arkansas is freaking talented, bros. They are really talented. My goodness. Florida, Virginia Tech. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Florida, Florida's a team that's kind of, you know, interesting, you know, in the long run. I don't, I think they earned their seventh seed. You know, again, the SEC likes to just get teams in somehow. You know, they're, they're just in because they are, because the SEC, the SEC is not really the strongest conference. They're not really the weakest conference either. They're strong enough, you know, to get teams like Florida in. But Arkansas is really good. And Virginia Tech is no slouch either. I, I, I've been kind of, you know, off and on about Virginia Tech all season long, but they are a good team. And Ohio State is a 2 C taking on Oral Roberts from the Summit. Again, the South region is stacked. This is one stacked region. There's a lot of teams that could, you know, get in this bracket, get and, and get all the way to the final four. Don't think it could be just Baylor. Don't think it could be just Ohio State. Arkansas has a, has a say in this. Texas Tech has a say in this. Purdue, even though I don't really agree that they're a number four seed, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think they really deserve a number four seed because they really didn't. They really didn't beat anybody, in my opinion. They deserve a number four seed, but correct me if I'm wrong. But mm, South Region is deadly. You never know who can come out of this bracket. You don't even know yet. Um, but moving on, we have the East Region, Michigan. I mean, you know, we were thinking, hey. Could this be a Michigan Appalachian State type thing? You know, could we see a 1 in 16 matchup with that? No, that's not going to happen. Instead, the SWAC champions, Texas Southern, Mount St. Mary's, and the NEC, they'll be the ones that will play to have the right to take on Michigan. LSU St. Bonnie's, two, there's two teams to the 8 10. Perfect. Two teams to the West Coast Conference, also. Perfect. I know people were like, oh, well, the West Coast Conference is weak. BYU is in, boys. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I, I hate it when casuals try to talk cap college basketball. I don't think you know what you're talking about. The West Coast Conference is not as weak as, say, the SWAC or the MEAC. It's not, it's not those two conferences. Not at all. BYU is a solid team. We'll talk about the two teams that they could play in a moment. But uh, LSU St. Bodies could be fun. Georgetown, who... I was very surprised to see Georgetown make it all the way to the tournament. They won the Big East tournament, and then they somehow got themselves entangled with Colorado. I don't know how they got it here, but man. Florida State, as I expected, I, I was saying this a month ago, and I'll say it again. They got a four seed. They'll be taking on UNC Greensboro. That is going to be fun, and I don't know how in the hell... Michigan State UCLA is a playing game. Michigan, in fact, there, there's another team that we have to talk about that should be in a playing game right now. I don't understand this. Michigan State beat 
<laughs> they beat a lot of the teams in this field. They beat Ohio State, they beat Michigan, and they beat Illinois. I don't get this. I don't get this at all. Whatever. But hey, my Longhorns are a three seed taking on Appling Christian, who won the Southland. Again, this could be, this has been great. You know, I was so surprised the Longhorns made it all the way to the Big 12 championship, but that was because of Kansas, you know, getting COVID. Uh, man, thankfully we got ourselves a three seed. We stayed on the three seed line. I was worried we were going to be a four, you know, at some point, but we won the Big 12. We got ourselves a three seed. UConn, Maryland, boy, oh boy, I... I'm so surprised that, you know, Maryland's in and UConn's in, too. UConn had a strong performance the last couple of in. And Alabama taking on Iona from the MAAC, you know. And Alabama is no slouch either. The East region is a little bit tricky, I think, you know. But, I mean, it could be Michigan. And, you know, I think the Longhorns actually could make a, a big run. I think they could. You never know. It, 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 it could be interesting for them. It could be very interesting for my long lord. I'm going to tell you that right now. I think we could make it, you know, pretty far in this tournament. I am so glad for that. And then lastly, the Midwest region, a bizarre region to say the least, let me tell you that. Um, you got Illinois, the number one, one seed, which I expected, you know, I expected there to be two Big Ten teams to be in number one seeds. They're taking on Drexel. Then that 8-9 matchup is going to be pretty sweet. Loyola, Chicago, Georgia Tech, going to be fun. Tennessee, who I'm not pretty high on. Not not particularly high on Tennessee at all. And they'll be taking on the Pac-12 Tournament Champions. Yes, I know, the Pac-12 Tournament Champions. Oregon State, I don't know how in the world they got it. They got all the way to the Pac-12 Championship and won the Pac-12 Championship. But there you go. Um, Oklahoma State, number four seed. You know, some people were worried about Oklahoma State. I think they should have been a three, you know, two. Honestly, they 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 whooped us one time. They whooped my Longhorns one time. Well, they didn't really whoop them, but they got them one time. They'll be telling on that dangerous Liberty team who's been waiting for like two weeks now to see who in the world they'll be playing. San Diego State. Damn good San Diego State team. They should dispatch of Syracuse, who should be in the first four, honestly, because I mean I don't care that they won against North Carolina. Syracuse is definitely a first four team. That's just atrocious right there by the NCAA committee. Um, West Virginia's three seed taking on Moorhead State. It'll be fun there. Clemson, Rutgers, holy Jesus, Rutgers, after 30 years, you're back? Hey, how you doing? It's been like 30 years, and you're back in the NCAA tournament. Good job. Houston's the number two seed. Take on Clemson State. I mean, not Clemson State. Cleveland State. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Um, but the last four teams that were out, Colorado State, Louisville, St. Louis, you know, and um, I forgot the other one. Hold up. Got the other one. It's the other team that was out. Real quick, I'd like to know who that last because it was Louisville who only played 20 games. Um, St. Louis who only played 20 games. Ah, uh, yes, Ole Miss. Yeah, Ole Miss. Uh, but Michigan State, UCLA, Wichita State, and Drake were the last four in. Again, I don't believe you know. I mean, I mean, UCLA kind of fell off. They were doing so good during the season, but then they just kind of fell off and stuff like that. Michigan State has the wins there. I don't understand why Syracuse isn't in the last four. Um, but Louisville, I can feel their pain. They've only played 20 games. They lost to Duke in the ACC tournament. Colorado State's been on the bubble the entire year, so, you know. You know, we all thought that the Mountain West is only going to get one team in, but they got two. So, there's that. Um, and St. Louis also had the same problems. They only had 20 games as well. Ole Miss is a tricky one because I don't really, I didn't really care for Ole Miss at all this season. But, I mean, they got some big victories. Ole Miss did. They really got some big victories against Missouri, who I don't think is where they should be. But, yeah, there's the tournament. The brackets are there. No Duke. No Kentucky. That is good 
stuff right there. That is good stuff. I'm loving that. But who do I think will come out, you know, um... <laughs> look, I want to say it's going to be Gonzaga versus Baylor in the national championship. I really want it. I really want it. But you never know what could happen. And, um... Again, those last four teams that, you know, weren't selected, they'll be number one seeds in the NIT. And we'll be seeing, you know, what in the world, you know, what in the world is going to happen. Because there's going to be things that are going to get adjusted. There's going to be things that are going to get crazy. So, you know, the entire bracket is out. And I am ready, baby. Are you ready? As I am, I want to break down the entire bracket instead of doing it in like five separate videos. But, you know, yeah, the bracket's out. Go fill out your brackets and let's do this, baby. Let's do this. March Madness is here. I'll see you guys next time, which will be tomorrow.